I am yours, Lord. You are mine. I'm your cup, Lord. Pour out your love. I'm your candle. You make me shine. I am yours, Lord. You are mine. children and welcome to the children summer. We thank the Lord for giving us a new month. And guess what boys and girls? This month primary B class will be taking us through the children summer. Our theme for this month is the call to go. My name is teacher Nancy and with me here are Sarah Mora, Mitch Alexander and Lucinda Owiti. All of us are from primary B class. But before we begin, Mitch, can you please pray for us? Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. As now we are starting, please bless us in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Lucinda, what did we learn last Sabbath? Last Sabbath, we learned about a teacher on the go. And what about this Sabbath, Mitch? This Sabbath, we are learning about Apollos at Ephesus from the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 18, 28. Yes, and our memory verse comes from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. And it says... All scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be prepared for his good work. Is that not so, Sarah? Yes. Yes. And therefore, children, our story begins with Paul together with Priscilla and Aquila. If you remember, children, Priscilla and Aquila were very good friends of Paul. Actually, they were a husband and wife. And so, together with Paul, they begin their journey traveling from Corinth to Ephesus. And you know what, children? Corinth and Ephesus are so far apart. They are so many kilometers away from each other. And they are traveling via a boat, using a boat. And therefore, that must have been a very long journey, probably many days of travel. But wait, children, what is different with Paul's journey this time around? Yes, Lucinda? This time, the difference is Paul leaves Corinth, not because of the persecution that has been in the past, but instead he leaves Corinth because he wants to leave. Yes, Paul leaves Corinth not because he's being driven out of the city, but because he wants to leave. Actually, things have really changed since Galileo's ruling. And together with his two friends, they have a stopover at Akenkri, a port city right in Corinth. What happens at Kenkri, children? Yes, Mitch? Paul shaves his hair because he had a vow. Yes, he shaves his hair because of a vow he had made. And then what happens after that, Sarah? He, after, he, after he shaved his hair to, and took the vow, he... The now voyage brings them to Ephesus. Is that not so, Lucinda? Yes. yes, children. And if you remember, children, the Spirit of the Lord had forbidden Paul to preach the gospel in Ephesus. But now we see him arriving in Ephesus in the Roman, prov in the Roman province of Asia. Hmm. What do we know about Ephesus? Yes, Lucinda? It had a population of over 250,000. Very well said. What else, Mitch? It was the leading city. Yes, it was the largest city in the Roman province of Asia. And then, at this point, Paul leaves Priscilla and Aquila. But wait, do the people in Ephesus allow Paul to just live like that? Yes, Sarah? No, they ask him to stay with them a little bit long. Yes, and does he accept to stay, Lucinda? No, he declined. 
Yes, for the first time in his experience as an apostle, Paul goes to the synagogue and the people want him to stay there. Previously, he will go to the synagogue to preach, they would chase him away, sometimes they will even persecute him, but this time there is actually a switch. He goes to the synagogue and they want him to stay there. But Paul has to leave. Why must Paul leave even though they are asking him to stay? Yes, Mitch? Because he wanted to go for a feast in Jerusalem. Yes, he's going for a feast in Jerusalem. Does he promise to come back, Sarah? Yes, he promised to come he will he promised to come back if God wills. Yes, and we see Paul is very conscious of the will of God. He actually says he will come back to Ephesus only if God wills. And do you know what children? He actually comes back to Ephesus much later and stays with them for three good years. What do we learn from Paul here, Lucinda? This what we learn from Paul is that he put God will fast in every conversation that he made. Yes, he put the will of God first. What about you, Mitch? We learned that God's time is the best. God's timing is the best. And you, Sarah? I've learned that Paul went with his friends Priscilla and Aquila to Ephesus. Yes, and Paul made a promise to come back to Ephesus and he actually fulfills the promise. And then after that, Paul now lands at Caesarea, a Mediterranean seaport right opposite Jerusalem. Guess what happens in Caesarea? Yes, Lucinda? What happens in Caesarea is that he goes, he goes to the church. The church greets them and then he goes back down to Antioch. Yes, Paul goes and greets the church and then he moves down to Antioch. And in Antioch, he doesn't, he doesn't just sit, he moves from one place to another, strengthening and teaching the disciples. Children, how can we strengthen each other? Yes, Sarah? We, we can strengthen each other by doing fellowship with, it, with our friends. Yes, fellowshipping together. Yes, Mitch? Reading the Bible together. Very well. And you, Lucinda? And encouraging one another. Yes, encouraging one another. And so, when Paul leaves Ephesus, hmm, someone arrives. Do you know who that person is, Sarah? Apollos. Yes, Apollos arrives in Ephesus. Do you know something about Apollos, Mitch? He was mighty in scriptures. He was mighty in scriptures, yes, Lucinda? He was a Jew. Yes. And he was born in Alexandria, which is found in Egypt. Very well said, children. I particularly love the one Mitch said. He was mighty in scriptures. Hmm, but wait a minute. What does it mean to be mighty in scriptures? Yes, Lucinda? It means that he searched the scriptures daily, just like the Bereans. Very well said, Lucinda. He read the Bible, and, and, and he, he went to the word of God and understood the word of God and searched the scriptures just like the Bereans. And you know what, children? We also need to read the Bible and be mighty in scriptures just like Apollos. Our desire as teachers is to train you in the ways of the Lord so that you can be mighty in scriptures. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. If you want to grow, if you want. and pray every single day. I urge you children to have time alone with God. Time when you can read your Bible, meditate about the scriptures, and pray every single day. You know what? You need to choose a quiet place at home and a specific time when you can have your time alone with God. But back to our story. What else do we know about Apollos? Yes, Lucinda? He was so he was mighty in the scriptures, just like Timothy, who was taught by his mother Eunice and his grandmother, who was called Lois. Yes, and he was also instructed in the ways of the Lord. Yes, Mitch? He had a fervent spirit. He had a fervent spirit, meaning? That he, 
He was filled with the Holy Spirit and preaching the word of God with boldness and power. And what about you, Sarah? He was preaching all about Jesus. Yes, he was preaching the word of God with exactness. You know what? We also need to teach the word of God with exactness just as God designed it to be. And so, Apollos went to the synagogue to preach boldly about Jesus Christ. But wait, who was present in that service? Yes, Sarah? Priscilla and Aquila. Yes, Priscilla and Aquila. And Priscilla and Aquila had Apollos preach the word of God, but Apollos was mi missing something. Apollos only knew the baptism of John. You know, children, when John the Baptist came, he came as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. He came to fulfill the scriptures as they are written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 3. He came to prepare the way for the Messiah. And so, Apollos knew about the, the message as John had preached it, but sadly, he didn't know about Jesus' burial, Jesus' death, and Jesus' resurrection. And then he went to the synagogue and he preached boldly about Jesus Christ. Who have we said was present in that service? Yes, Lucinda? Priscilla and Aquila. Yes, Priscilla and Aquila. The two good friends of Paul, they were actually in that service. And so they listened as Apollo preached the gospel and they realized that Apollos was missing something. What was Apollos missing, Mitch? Jesus' death, res Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and resurrection. Very well said, Mitch. Apollos was missing Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection. And so what did they do? Priscilla and Aquila, they called Apollos, invited him to their home, and they preached the gospel to him. They taught him more about Jesus. They actually taught him how Jesus died, how he was buried, how he rose again on the third day, how children he ascended into heaven, and how he sent down the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And so, how did Apollos react to this teaching? Yes, uh, Sarah? He accepted the teaching. Yes, Apollos accepted the teaching and did what else? He accepted the teachings and went back to the signature and teach those who had believed in for if they had believed, he himself would have believed also. Yes, yeah, so Apollos accepted the teaching of Priscilla and Aquila. And remember, Priscilla and Aquila, they did not criticize Apollos. They didn't reject him. They actually lovingly expounded the scripture to him. And Apollos, as children, as you have said, he accepted the teaching. He didn't say, mm -mm, I'm mighty in the scriptures. You can't tell me anything. He was humble and accepted the teaching of Priscilla and Aquila. And now we see Apollo is fully instructed in the ways of the Lord and he was now ready to go for mission. And so Apollos now moved to southern Greece. He began his travel to southern Greece. But before he traveled, did the people in Ephesus do something? Yes, Lucinda? The brethren wrote a letter to the disciples encouraging them to receive it, for he was mighty in the scriptures and he knew the gospel well. Yes. Mitch, do you want to add something? Yes. Okay. They sent a letter to the apostles telling, telling them to accept Yes, they sent a letter. Sarah, you want to add something? No. All right. They wrote a letter to the disciples over there and told them to accept Apollos because he was a good teacher of the gospel. Wow, children. You are such amazing. You are such Bible scholars. And we have learned so much from our story today. Don't you think so? Yes. Do you want to share with the boys and girls at home what we have learned? Yes. Yes, we'll start from Lucinda. We've learned that Paul put God's will first in everything that he did. And we too can also put God's will first. Amen. And you, Mitch? We should be mighty in scriptures just like Apollos. Yes, we need to be mighty in scriptures just like Apollos. And what about you, Sarah? Apollos was taught by Aquila and Priscilla that more about Jesus. And so we should also teach other people more about Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with God. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, I am tangled up with Jesus. I am wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, 
Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with God. Sarah, please pray for us as we finish. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for helping us children to be good Bible scholars. May you help us to be better and to be just like Paul and Apollos. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, children, for joining us. See you again next Sabbath. But for now, bye! bye.